Welcome to this final part of the RE Requirements Engineering Lecture and we now talk about the management of requirements and then we wrap up the whole thing. So managing is uh, the process of basically dealing with, out, uh, with requirements throughout their life cycle. Uh, you have new requirements coming in, you have requirements changing, uh, you have to track them while you're developing them and so on. So points that you deal with in management is typically the change of requirements. So requirements do change and that's in fact one of the big issues we have in software engineering while you're developing and while the software is in use things change uh, so on a development level how do you deal with this if for example the client comes in halfway through your development and says we need to change something uh, we have realized there are problems we need to change uh, what do you do and this is partly a tooling issue so can you just modify it in your system do you need to keep versions do you need to uh, do history essentially but it's also about uh, what do you do when this happens is there a kind of a process for this and in fact the Sommerwell book talks about the change process a lot so many companies for instance have a system that says okay the, the clients or the users can register a change request uh, and when it comes in it's being analyzed and in practice that means someone looks at it looks at the existing requirements and tries to understand why is the change there is it something we did wrong maybe we misunderstood something is it a requirement we have missed the elicitation was not complete um, it might also be a bug so everything is correct from a requirements perspective but in the system something has been wrongly implemented but all of this requires some kind of process how do you register a change who looks at it what do they do and so on so that's something we need to have in place if the development is complicated large enough uh, so that's an important part uh, the next thing we might want to have is a traceability policy and traceability is the basically the practice of connecting things to each other uh, in many cases requirements for example to tests or to code so that if you look at let's say a requirement uh, an individual requirement can you tell how this is implemented in code can you tell how this is tested or if it is tested that's one way you might also have to for example connect it to another requirement so for example I mentioned in the previous video that uh, the requirement to do voice recording to switch on the radio might depend on a more general requirement that voice capability is existing in the system uh, and this is something that is often required by regulations you have to do that for example if you develop uh, financial software or safety critical software or so on uh, but it's also something that is of course useful to have so if a change comes in here you might be able to tell which code, which tests do we have to change. Or if you change some code because there's a bug, you might understand, okay, this, de this depends or this implements a certain requirement and there are other requirements depending on that. Maybe I also need to look at the code that is implementing this part to fix the bug properly. Uh, so essentially this is all about understanding how things are connected and in an organization you need to have some kind of policy of how to do this. For example, do we need connections between requirements and code? Then you have to somehow tell the developers to do this. Uh, you also have to give them access that they can actually, for example, touch the requirements in the requirements management tool. So it's all about having a policy. And that has to do, uh, of course, with requirements, with regulations. So are we required to have certain trace links? But it also has to do with costs. It's good to have these trace links, but it's very expensive to create them. So you want to have your developers focus on testing, on coding, not just documenting all the time. So it's a matter of cost. And even if you have this in place, the question is, how do you update these so that you don't end up with a system where all of these connections are there but they're all wrong, then they don't help you at all. Uh, so there should be some kind of process, some kind of policy in the company that says this is how we do traceability, this is who does it and when. Uh, and finally, 
management is a lot about tooling. What kind of tools do we have in place? Uh, who has access to them? What kind of licenses do we need? What are the capabilities? Uh, for example, if we talk about tracing, you might be doing your coding in, let's say, VS Code or any kind of IDE. Uh, the requirements are probably another tool, and then the question is, is there any easy way to connect code to requirements? Or do you have to go into two different tools? You have to do manually somehow the connection. Uh, for example, in your code, uh, you add a comment that says requirement uh, one. That's your trace link. That's not very useful because you have to do manually all the work. So there is a lot of debate about tooling and in fact, uh, many companies we talk to are very often concerned with this. What is the best requirements engineering tool? How do we use it? Uh, so that's a big part of it. Now this is all I want to mention about uh, management. In fact, this, all of these points are a lot of different work. They're very complicated, but you should at this point just be aware of that these are issues. Let's wrap this up. So requirements engineering is, is all about figuring out and documenting and managing uh, what the stakeholder needs are. And the important thing is uh, it's not just writing down. So for many people, when you mention requirements, they're all like, yeah, but why do we need a large text document? It's not only that. Uh, in fact, for many companies, the value in requirements is the knowledge. So all the work you put into understanding what you really need, understanding your end users, understanding the stakeholders, uh, that is really the key here. Uh, and in particular, if we talk about management, being sure that this knowledge stays over time. Because especially in larger companies, you can expect that your developers, your requirements engineers are leaving at some point. There might be new people coming in. So how do you keep this knowledge in the company? And that's also when we go into processes in the next module, if we talk about agile development, uh, there has been the debate a bit in agile development, do we sti still need requirements engineering? Well. You still need the knowledge of what to build, so in a way, yes, you do need requirements engineering. It might look different, you might not have long text documents, but you still need to think about all these four different uh, activities. How do you make sure to get the requirements? How do you document? Should you doc document them at all? How do you validate them? And how do you manage them? Okay, so this concludes the module on requirements engineering. Thank you very much for watching.